Recklinghausen, Germany, winter, 1943. The hangar reeked of oil, tobacco, and triumph. Round a long wooden table littered with blueprints, four Luftwaffe engineers studied a freshly delivered intelligence folder marked U. Outside, icy wind rattled the tin walls. It's inside, the warmth of confidence filled the air. For German engineers, engines were sacred. Perfection wasn't manufactured, it was crafted. Every Daimler-Benz DB605 carried the mark of human touch. Bolts were filed by hand, tolerances judged by ear, balance measured by fingertips. To them, machinery was an art form, not arithmetic. The Packard name meant luxury and excess, not engineering mastery. Muller flipped another page. The report was blunt. The United States intends to produce 5,000 Rolls-Royce Merlin engines under license. He scoffed. They can't even train enough mechanics to maintain them, he said. And they think they'll build 50,000. His assistant, Carl, flicked ash from his cigarette. Mass production kills precision, he muttered a phrase that had become doctrine in German workshops. To them, every Spitfire engine was alive, each cylinder slightly imperfect, tuned by hand to a craftsman's intuition. They could not imagine a factory in Detroit recreating that spirit. American machines were clumsy, their bombers crude, their engines loud and leaky. They build in tons, not in tolerances, Muller said, tapping his pencil on the report. This is what happens when accountants design engines. Laughter again, but buried in the file was something unsettling. The Americans had not simply copied the blueprints, they had redrawn them entirely, converting every measurement into their own system. To German minds, that was heresy. They'll ruin it, Carl said. Convert millimeters two inches, and you'll destroy it. Muller nodded. They'll copy the shape, not the soul. In the margin, he wrote, copy equals inferior by design. Outside, a Daimler-Benz engine roared to life, echoing across the frozen airfield, Muller smiled. That, he said, is how an engine should sound, hand-built, alive, perfect. He snapped the American file shut. If they ever face us with these Packard toys, we'll burn them from the sky. What Muller could not imagine was that across the Atlantic. Those toys were already running flawlessly, produced by machines that knew no fatigue, no pride, and no error. In Germany, perfection was art. In America, perfection was arithmetic. Derby, England, early 1940. Inside the red brick walls of the Rolls-Royce factory, the war already thundered in rhythm with hammers and micrometers. The Merlin engine well cylinders of British defiance was being born. For the craftsmen, it was more than metal. It was music. Harold Watkins, a veteran machinist, stood over a half-finished crankcase. His hands were calloused, his eyes precise. Each movement of his file was deliberate, each whisper of metal a dialogue between man and material. When his gauge read 0 0.0005, he smiled. Perfect. The Merlin wasn't designed for mass production. It was designed for immortality, 1,500 horsepower of mechanical poetry. Each engine consumed more than a thousand hours of labor, every one slightly unique. Rolls-Royce didn't fight imperfection. They tuned it, as a violinist would his strings. And when the first Spitfire took flight with a Merlin beneath its cowl, the sound became the anthem of survival. Pilots said they could feel the engine breathe with them, as if it had a soul. But craftsmanship had its limits. Britain was fighting for its life, and each hand-built masterpiece took too long. Engines failed. Mechanics wept over scorched metal like mourners. The Merlin was loyalty, sacrifice and fragility. Across the ocean, American observers took notes in awe. To them, the Rolls-Royce factory was a temple of genius trapped in ritual. One engineer asked, how do you expect to win a war building engines like violins? The foreman replied softly, because ours play the right tune. But soon, Britain needed not just brilliance, but abundance. And so, reluctantly, the blueprints were handed over to America. When workers in Derby heard that the Packard Motor Company would build their sacred engine, many were outraged. They'll drown it in oil and call it progress, one said. But war demanded humility. The sky could not wait for pride. Detroit, Michigan, autumn 1942, over the Detroit River, the night sky glowed orange not from bombs, but from furnaces. Inside Packard's vast brick plant, 
The rhythm of industry never stopped. Presses thundered. Wrenches clanged. Engines screamed on test stands. The blueprints from Derby had arrived a mountain of hand-drawn art filled with imperial measurements, scribbled notes and symbols no one understood. Packard's chief engineer, Jesse Vincent, studied them and said, If we build this the British way, we'll make one engine a month. We need one an hour. Where Rolls-Royce saw perfection in touch, Packard saw perfection in process. So they started again from zero. 21,000 drawings were redrafted, translated into American standards, converted from artistry into mathematics. Where Rolls-Royce wrote Fitznug, Packard wrote Clearance, 0 0.0012 plus or minus 0 0.0001 in, machines replaced intuition. Yes. Every measurement was defined, every component standardized. Human error was designed out of existence. It was precision through repetition. When the first Packard Merlin ran on the test stand in December 1942, it shocked everyone. The engine didn't roar it purred, smoother than any British original. Data confirmed it. The Packard Merlin delivered identical power, lower fuel consumption, and longer life. Detroit had done what no one believed, possible mass-produced perfection. Within months, the factory was building one Merlin every 60 minutes. Each was flawless, interchangeable, and identical. When they arrived in England, even Rolls-Royce engineers were stunned. The Packard engines fit perfectly, ran cleaner, and outlasted their handmade cousins. The copy had become the improvement. The sky changes hands 1943 in a quiet California hangar. Engineers mounted the Packard Merlin into a new fighter, the P-51 Mustang. When test pilot Bob Chilton pulled back on the stick, the aircraft climbed like lightning. Over the radio, he laughed. Gentlemen, I think we just changed the war. He was right. With the Merlin supercharger, the Mustang could soar to 437 miles per hour, higher and faster than any German fighter. Suddenly, Allied bombers had an escort that could follow them deep into Europe and come home. When German spotters first saw the new aircraft, they didn't recognize it. Hmm. It flew higher than Spitfires, faster than anything they'd faced. One Luftwaffe pilot later said, They came out of the sun. I thought they were Spitfires, but they kept climbing. Then the tracers came down like lightning. When German engineers recovered wreckage from a downed P-51, they examined the engine plate. It didn't read Rolls-Royce, said Packard Motor Division Detroit. USA. One engineer ran his hand across the casting and whispered, They've improved it. Damn them, they've improved it. By late 1943, Packard built Merlin's powered Spitfires, Mosquitoes, and Lancasters across Europe. The statistics were staggering mission range increased by 60%. Engine failures halved. Operational readiness soared. Germany was being defeated not just by pilots but by production lines. General Erhard Milk reviewing intelligence reports underlined one line in red, enemy industrial capacity now beyond measurable limits. He looked up and said quietly, they have turned engineering into warfare. Epilogue, the triumph of arithmetic in Detroit. The lights never went dark. Welders sparked through the night. Women on assembly lines war badges marked Merlin Division. Every six minutes, a new engine was born. The men who once mocked mass production had been proven wrong. Perfection had not died, had evolved. In Britain, craftsmanship created brilliance. In America, Standardization made it unstoppable. The Packard Merlin was no longer a copy, it was the future. Proof that machines could sing, that industry could create art, and that arithmetic could win a war.